can sing, but C, and I'm not going to name any of the acts in question, unlike loads of modern day acts, he's actually got a personality. He's actually got yeah. something there. He's got a spark, yeah, hasn't he? Something Sam special Fender. about him. Something special. Superb. Now, what you might not know is, aside from all those people who performed at Glastonbury, one of our good friends on the show also ended up performing there. More on that in just a second. First, though, something we need to address, which happened at Worthy Farm that caused outrage among Stokies who were there. Oat cakes were being sold in Glastonbury. Brilliant. Great idea. Five quid? Five quid for oat cakes? Minimum. Five quid <laughs> minimum for oat cakes. BBC Radio Stokes, Vicky Norton's been getting some reaction to it. I'm happy to go to a cafe or anything like that and pay their price for it, but that's because it's the local service. So, certainly not that at glass from Bruno. So five pounds for bacon, cheese and tomato oat cake, would you pay that? Have you ever paid that? That sounds reasonable. Yeah, Yeah, at a cafe, yeah, yeah. But it's, it's got to be nice as well. It, it can't be like your, just your bits and rubbish and all of that. What about sausage, apple, onion and cheese for £9.50? No, they can keep it. Oat cakes are generally about sort of with a two fillings, about two pounds. You know, it's all one fifty-two pounds, and that, I suppose in somewhere other than Stoke, obviously in Stoke, you're going to get it at the proper value. I suppose if you're away from there, then yes, you expect to pay say fifty percent more, so three pound maybe. <laughs> I'm about to speak to Mandy from Six Towns Oat Cakes. So can I ask you, first of all, because there have been some interesting menu items. Have you heard, for instance, of brie and cranberry oat cakes? No. Um, tuna. We have been asked for tuna oat cakes, yes. Um, but not, not as posh as brie and cranberry. OK, but you've got the good old favourite, the bacon. Bacon, cheese, sausage and cheese. So if I was to give you £5, what could I get for that here? You could get, you could actually get a... A bit, quite a big double oat cake. You'd have four, at By least four or five items on it. So you'd be full for the day, trust me, if you had one of those. Or you could have, for six pounds, you could have a whop, which is a 15 inch oat cake. Wow, okay, yeah, that, that might. <laughs> that comes with bacon, sausage, and cheese, but you can add or put what you want on it, so. That's the kind of thing I'd want to wake up to after a night in a tent at a wet festival. Yeah, a 15 inch oat cake. Or even a sunny festival, but that would keep you going for the day. It would, yeah. That'd keep you going all day, breakfast, dinner and tea. So to so anyone who might have sampled Staffordshire oat cakes for the first time at Glastonbury, what would you say they should do? <laughs> Come to Stoke and try the best ones. I'll tell you what they should do. Go and have a word with the man wearing the mask and the striped jumper. Five quid! <laughs> yeah, exactly. At least Dick Turpin had a mask on. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, the second guy who Vicky spoke to there, I quote him, five pounds for oatcakes. That sounds reasonable. No, it doesn't sound reasonable. It sounds like an absolute... It does, if it's a festival price. If you're paying festival prices, you expect to pay a hike. I've seen burger and chips going for seven pounds fifty. I in know, some of these places. You can't charge a fiver for an oat cake, can you? You can't really. It's daylight cheese, robbery. Rasher of bacon. But you're in a field. It's a captive audience. You're done, aren't you? Oh, dear. Still, though, five pounds for an oat cake with some cheese on it, a piece of bacon or a sausage, and if you're a complete weirdo, some brown sauce. It's... Nah. Nah, I'm not having that. <laughs> Anyhow, that's the outrageous price of Glastonbury oat cakes address. Back to the music. A good friend of the show got to perform at Worthy Farm. What am I missing? Our very own star of Monday Motivation, Sandbatch singer Lisa T, ended up playing to thousands at Glastonbury. Lisa, good morning. Good morning, Lee. How are you? Uh, very well. First of all, for me and Matt, woo! <laughs> Not quite thousands, that is it, but that'll do. No, who needs Aww, thousands when you've got that? <laughs> How was it? Oh, it was. It was amazing. It's um. It's people said to me before I went, because I've never been to Glastonbury before. People said, you know, you can't really explain it. It's really hard, but it, it's true. It was just such an incredible experience. I've never, I've just never experienced anything like Glastonbury, like being there or, and then to sing there, you know, I, I really wasn't expecting to, for that to, to sort of happen. <laughs> what stage were you on and what were you like before you went on it? Well, I bet you were nervous. 
I was nervous. So there's so many different areas to Glastonbury. It was in the Avalon field. So um, in the Avalon field, there's the main stage and that's where like the Sugar Babes and McFly were performing. And then there's a little stage next to that stage. And um, they were having to sort of do slots in the half hour break between the big acts on the Avalon main stage. So I was on the smaller stage. And um, basically when we got there on the Thursday, I went across to, to both of the little stages in the Avalon area, which is where we were sort of based. And I said, um, you know, if anyone drops out over the weekend, I'm literally just over there, just let me know. So went back again on the Friday, just to let you know I'm still here if, if anyone drops out. <laughs> then I went back again on the Saturday morning and he was like, okay, fine, you can just, you can play. <laughs> I think he was just kind of getting a bit sick of me. And I was like, yes. And then just gave him a massive hug. And he said, um, half four, we've got um, a slot open, half four till five. And that was in between some of the, like I say, the bigger acts on the main stage. So yeah, all day then, because I'd found out it was going to happen on the Saturday morning. So I was just so, I was more excited than nervous, but I was just so excited. Um, and yeah, it was amazing, because like I say, it was in between the acts on the big stage. So everyone was sort of at a bit of a loose end who had just finished watching the, the main Avalon stage. So they kind of wandered over and there was just loads of people. It was amazing. It was so good. <laughs> so, so, so you had quite the crowd. What, what was the reaction like? It was great. Yeah. One of one of the songs that we do um, at the end, it has like a call and response bit. And, um, you know, you get the audience to, to join in. And it was just amazing. And my guitarist, Luke, he said to me, you've got to shout, come on, Glastonbury, or you'll regret it forever. <laughs> so when we were doing the call and response, he was like, say it, say it. So I was like, <laughs> come on, Glastonbury. And yeah, it was really good. <laughs> so, so, so you waited until mid set. Did you not just walk on straight away and just go, hello, Glastonbury? <laughs> I'd have done that, so I couldn't have been. I couldn't have helped myself if I'd been performing. Uh, no, no, I didn't do that. But at the end, I did. I did do the, you know, the usual. Thank you, Glastonbury. I did do that at yes. the end. Yes. Ah, oh, you must have been absolutely buzzing when you came off stage. I was. I still am. It's. It was just. I think because it was so unexpected as well. You know, I was. I thought, right, I'll just keep trying and see what happens. Um, and then it happened. So yeah, I'm just so. I'm just so happy that. Um, that. That I did it. Yeah, it was really, really good. What's your plan now? Are you going to retire from music? Because you can't top that, can you? <laughs> no, I'm going to keep um, working up and aiming to get on the bigger stages. And, you know, eventually if they'll be saying, sorry, Paul, we can't. <laughs> we can't. <laughs> Not have you on this stage anymore. <laughs> you watch, you joke. 2022, Sir Paul McCartney. 2020, oh, let's give you a bit of time. For Lisa T, Pyramid Stage. Oh, did you see any of Sir Paul, by the way? Oh, yes, I did. He was just amazing. It was such a an amazing um like thing to to see, to see Paul McCartney live. It was just unbelievable. He was, yeah, he was fantastic. Well, normally when I sign off with a guest, I just say, listen, thank you ever so much for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure. And then you say thank you and goodbye. And then we just get on with our lives. That's how it works. Can you just sign off by just giving me the biggest thank you, Glastonbury, you've ever done? <laughs> yes. OK, ready? Three, <laughs> two, one. Thank you, Glastonbury! <laughs> <laughs> Lisa T, brilliant stuff. Honestly, massive congratulations. That's something big to tick off. Thank you ever so much for coming on. We'll speak soon. Speak soon. Thank you. Great stuff. Lisa T from Sandbat. You performed at Glastonbury. Absolute magic. Got to do the whole thank you, Glastonbury thing and everything. Brilliant. Right, let's go to the roads where we really are slow now on the A53 